I'd like to discuss the difference, well, the difference that I think we can define between shearing and gliding in our world and in our tissues. So I use these words a lot when I'm teaching anatomy and trying to help people understand the different ways in which differential movement manifests in our bodies. Now, by differential movement, I mean the capacity for tissues to go in different directions at the same time, even while they're adjacent to each other and connected to each other. How do things that are connected to each other go in different directions in our body? Because it happens all day long in every movement that you do. We have fancy finger movements and the muscle tissues in your arm are going in different directions. How does that happen? Well, also we have in our body our viscera, our guts, inside of our visceral spaces, and they too are demonstrating differential movement relative to the, the walls of the cavities that they live in and relative to each other. How does that happen? So I use the words shearing and gliding to differentiate between the two different types of differential movement that we can see demonstrated in the musculoskeletal tissues versus the visceral space. Shearing is a term borrowed from engineering. I can't say I use it exactly the way an engineer uses the word, but I do find it helpful in making the distinction between the types of differential movement we find in the body, in the visceral spaces, and the musculoskeletal tissues. So shearing occurs or describes the phenomenon where a force applied in a given direction will cause differential movement. Oh, I need little arrows here. So this is going this way, and this is going this way from a force applied in this direction. So that's kind of interesting, right? It kind of warps. It goes in different directions like that. And we see the same phenomenon happening inside of our body. We can have one muscle bundle here and another bun muscle bundle here. And as the tissues differentially correct, co contract, we have intervening between them what I call perifascia. So there's a continuous fabric within our bodies. And the muscle tissues are interpenetrated with connective tissue. And the perifascia, meaning the membranous layer in between two muscle fasciculi that have differential movement, when they contract, they can go in opposite directions, but they're continuous through the fascia. So we have, say, muscle tissue, membrane, muscle tissue, and that enables differential movement between the two. There are other dem ways I could demonstrate perifascia, but that's a good example. Now, so we'll call that shearing. Shearing is when we have continuity of tissues through fascia that permits oppositional or differential movement to occur between the tissues. Now, gliding or true gliding is best modeled to my mind with a hockey puck. That's the hockey puck. <laughs> that's the ice there. And that's the film, the film of water that permit the hockey puck to glide very swiftly over the ice. Now, it's not airborne, it's waterborne, right? There's a fluid interface between the two things, the ice and the puck, that are demonstrating differential movement. As the puck glides over the ice, truly glides, it's skimming along the surface on the water. Now, we have a similar phenomenon in our bodies, in the visceral spaces. Now, I've modeled it up with a very <laughs> abstract drawing of a lung. You can see it has lobes here and here and here. And we have the lobes are, you know, kind of tissue segments that move relative to each other. And we'll make the green part, say, the chest wall or the fascia around it. And the blue line in between the lung surface and the wall would be the serous fluid. So there is fluid in the visceral spaces and the lungs within their own structure, the lobes, will 
demonstrate as the breath inhales spirillic movement that permits there to be true gliding in the tissue surfaces, both the lung to itself and the lung relative to the cavity and where it, where it lives. Same thing happens in your belly, where the stomach is gliding relative to the liver, where the spleen is gliding relative to the diaphragm. We have intervening between the spleen and the diaphragm, between the liver and the stomach, a serous fluid, the, the, the hockey puck's water film over the ice, the serous fluid that's produced by the membranes in the visceral spaces, allows there to be true gliding and differential movement between the tissues without them being directly connected by a fascia. So they're continuous, right? We have the lung tissue, we have the serous fluid, and we have the, the wall of the space, but intervening between them, yeah, then this fluid is continuous and yet allows true gliding, whereas here the musculoskeletal tissues permit instead of shearing rather than gliding because of the continuity of the connective tissue between the things that are having differential movement. Now, that might seem kind of academic, but if we're trying to understand the human body and its movements, as well as the human body and its difficulties in movements, there will be different phenomena that occur to result in the inhibition of movement, depending upon whether it's gliding or shearing. So shearing tissues can have phenomena of inflammation and dehydration in such a way that the slippery membrane connecting these two muscle groupings can become less slippery, uh, more gummy or gluey, you might say, in tiny percentages. I'm not talking about real Elmer's glue here. I'm talking about increments that change the functions of the tissues and can even go so far as to create and generate adhesions between the two. So where, where there won't be membrane in a spot and there'll be connection. Similarly, we can have adhesion between formerly gliding surfaces in the visceral spaces, same problems when we have inflammation and dehydration. We can have uh, connections forming across the divide that make it an inhibition of the potential gliding movement of the organ. So in either cases, we can have adhesions uh, but it's really slightly different phenomenon. Here we have a change in kind of the, the chemistry and physiology of the membrane intervening between them that results in an adhesion or slowing down of the slipperiness. And here uh, we can have sort of cross-linking of surfaces across the, across the fluid. So there you go. Shearing versus gliding. I hope that gives you some ideas about the structure of our body and the amazing way in which we express differential movement. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.